Hello, HISD students and families. We sure miss seeing you on campuses, but we're glad that we have an opportunity to reach out to you and help guide your learning at home. This week, we will be focusing on poetry for middle school language arts. This presentation will cover grades six through eight. The at-home lessons can be found on the HISD at home website which is located at houstonisd.org slash home. On the left-hand side, you will click on Middle School Students, and then you'll scroll down the page to see the PBL lessons. You'll see sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Once you click on there, you'll click ELA for your English language arts classes. This week, our focus will be on creative writing, for poetry. Let's start with sixth grade. The learning targets for sixth grade will be, I can read for longer amounts of time, I can read and take notes about poetry, I can write poems, and I can revise and edit poems. You will have a project at the end of the week that will cover things that you do throughout the week. You will create a collection that includes thoughtful reflections on poems that you have read, as well as three original poems that show evidence of revising and editing, and final drafts that include few errors in grammar and mechanics. Every week, we have weekly routines that are included. You will do these weekly routines each day of the week. Independent reading for 15 minutes. As you read, record anything that surprises you, any interesting language you notice, or words that pop from the page. Starting Monday, after your independent reading, you will do the following. Read one poem from the list below. As you read, annotate the poem using the WASP strategy. You have four options to choose from. The Walrus and the Carpenter, Swarm, wind, water, stone, or peaches. In addition, if you cannot access these poems online, you may access a poem in your Pearson My Perspective textbook. Look at the words that popped off the page. Write a half page reflection that answers the question, how did the poet paint a picture with their words? Finally, brainstorm ideas for your poems. How can you use your own ideas or thoughts? If you need ideas, reach out to the writing prompts resource for poetry. Here are some of the resources that you'll be using this week. If you need help with annotating your poem, you can use WASP in the resource packet. The W stands for words that pop. The A stands for attitude. The S stands for shifts, and the P stands for poetic devices. There are questions under each section that will help you understand what kind of information you should be pulling from the poems. Another resource that you might find helpful if you need help with brainstorming will be the writing prompts for poetry. It is located in the resource packet as well. These are just some ideas to get you started. You don't have to use them, but if you can't think of something to write about, these ideas will help get you started. By the end of the day on Monday, you should have read one model poem and you should have a list of brainstormed ideas for your poems. Tuesday. On Tuesday, you will choose another poem from Monday's list. Think about the WASP strategy as you read. Remember, if you still need help with WASP, it's located in the resource packet. Next, write a half page reflection that answers the questions, what imagery does the poet use? How can I use some of those craft moves in my own poems? Hint, imagery is descriptive language that appeals to your senses. See, taste, touch, smell, and hear. The words that the poet uses should make one of those senses come to life. Now it's time to begin writing your own poems. 
Look at your brainstorm list from yesterday and choose three ideas. Place a star next to them. Write a rough draft of a poem in your literacy notebook on a sheet of paper or using a Word document. Make sure to try to use some imagery of your own as you write your poems. Again, if you need help with annotating your poem, you can use WASP in the resource packet. By the end of the day on Tuesday, you should have read one model poem, written a thoughtful reflection, and have a rough draft of a poem written in your literacy notebook, on a sheet of paper, or in a Word document. Try to use some imagery of your own. On Wednesday, choose a third poem from Monday's list. As you read, look for figurative language. Remember, figurative language includes things like similes, metaphors, and personification. You'll write a half-page reflection that answers the question, what figurative language did the author use and how did it make the reader, you are the reader, how did it make you feel? If you need more help and are able, watch the video, The Art of the Metaphor on YouTube. The link is in the PBL packet. Now it's time to draft another poem. If you're stuck, try a prompt from the writing prompts for poetry. And remember, try to include imagery and figurative language. If you need help with brainstorming, you can use an option from the writing prompts poetry in the reading resources packet. By the end of the day on Wednesday, you should have read one model poem, written a thoughtful reflection, and you'll have a draft of a poem in your literacy notebook on a sheet of paper or in a Word document. Try to use some imagery of your own. On Thursday, you will reread a poem from Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. As you read, see if you can point out how the poet reveals his or her feelings or attitudes. Write a half-page reflection that answers the questions, what words in the poem lets us know the author's attitude or their tone? What tone am I trying to reveal in the poem I wrote yesterday? If you need help and you are able, watch What is Tone on YouTube. Now it's time to draft your third and final poem. Remember, you can choose one of your original ideas or choose another prompt from the writing prompts for poetry. Be sure to include imagery, figurative language, and tone in your poem. If you need help with brainstorming, you can use an option from the writing prompts poetry in the resources packet. You will also use the cups and arms handout in the resources packet to improve two areas in your poems. By the end of the day, you should have reread one model poem, written a thoughtful reflection, written a rough draft of a poem in your literacy notebook on a sheet of paper or in a Word document. Try to use some imagery of your own. By now, you should have three rough drafts of poems written in your notebook. Friday is the time to put the final touches on your poems. Again, look at the cups and arms list. Choose two areas where your poems need the most help. Don't revise or edit everything. As you revise and edit, use a different colored ink for each so you can easily see your changes. Once you've finished your revisions and edits, write final drafts of your poems on clean sheets of paper. You can also type them up in a Word document if that is easier. Did you write a brilliant poem and want the world to read it? Get an adult's permission to submit them online to literary journals like New Moon Girls or the Young Project, the, Run the Young Writers Project. By the end of the day on Friday, you should have the following completed. One brainstorm, three half-page reflections based on the poems you read, three rough drafts that have proof of revising and editing in different colored inks, three final draft poems with little to no errors in grammar and mechanics, and you will submit your final drafts to your teachers via email, the hub, Teams, or whatever method you are using to submit your work to your teachers. Just to recap, the sixth grade project, 
you will have created a collection that includes thoughtful reflections on poems that you have read, as well as three original poems that show evidence of revising and editing, and final drafts that include few errors in grammar and mechanics. Now it's time to talk about seventh grade. Seventh graders' projects will be very similar to sixth grade. However, you have different texts that you will be reading from. Let's see what your work will consist of this week. Your learning targets will be that you can read longer amounts of time, you can read and take notes about poetry, you can write poems, and you can revise and edit poems. You will also create a collection that includes thoughtful reflections about the poems that you have read this week, as well as three original poems that show evidence of revising and editing and final drafts that include few errors in grammar and mechanics. Your weekly routines also include 15 minutes of independent reading and making sure that you record anything that surprises you, any interesting language you notice or words that pop from the page. On Monday, you will read one poem from the list below. As you read, annotate the poem using the WASP strategy. The WASP strategy can also be found in the resources section of the at home website. You have four options to choose from as well. Maps, Gate A4, Etiquette, and The Listener. All four of these poems can be found by using the links to online websites. If you cannot access these poems, please feel free to use a poem in your My Pearson, My Perspectives 7th grade textbook. Look at the words that popped off the page and write a half page reflection that answers the question, how did the poet paint a picture with their words? Finally, brainstorm ideas for your poems. You can use your own ideas or you can refer to the writing prompts for poetry that's located in the resources section. On Monday, if you need help with annotating your poem, you can use the WASP strategy in the resource packets. Remember, W stands for words that pop, A stands for attitude, S is for shifts, and P is for poetic devices. There are questions listed that will help you know what to pull from each poem. If you need help with brainstorming, again, you can use as an option from the writing prompts poetry in the resource packet. Remember, you can use your own ideas, but if you get stuck, here's a great place to look for ideas. By the end of the day on Monday, you should have read one model poem and you should have a list of brainstormed ideas for your poem. On Tuesday, you will choose another poem from Monday's list. Think about the WASP strategy again as you read. Next, write a half-page reflection that answers the questions, what imagery does the poet use? How can I use some of those craft moves in my own poems? Hint, imagery is descriptive language that appeals to your senses. When you read the words on the page, you should be able to see, taste, touch, smell, or hear what the poet is describing. Now it's time to begin writing your own poems. Look at your brainstorm list from yesterday and choose three ideas and place a star next to each of them. Write a rough draft of one poem in your literacy notebook on a sheet of paper or in a Word document. Remember to try to use imagery of your own. Maybe one or two examples is a good start. For Tuesday, the resources that you will use for annotating your poem include the WASP resource in your resource packet. By the end of the day, you should have read one model poem, written a thoughtful reflection about that poem, and written a rough draft of your first poem in your literacy notebook, on a sheet of paper, or in a Word document. Remember to try to use some imagery of your own. On Wednesday, seventh graders will choose a third poem from Monday's list. As you read, look for figurative language. Remember, figurative language includes things like similes, metaphor, and personification. Write a half-page reflection that answers the following question. 
What figurative language did the author use and how did it make you, the reader, feel? If you need more help and are able, watch the video, The Art of Metaphor, on YouTube. Now it's time to draft a second poem. If you're stuck, remember, you can use a prompt from the Writing Prompts for Poetry. Try to include imagery and figurative language. Again, remember that you have resources that you can use that include the Writing Prompts for Poetry and WASP. By the end of the day on Wednesday, you should have read one model poem, written a thoughtful reflection, and have a rough draft of a second poem in your literacy notebook, on a sheet of paper, or in a Word document. Remember, don't forget to use imagery and figurative language of your own. On Thursday, seventh graders will reread a poem from Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. As you read, see if you can point out how the poet reveals his or her feelings or attitude. Write a half page reflection that answers the questions. What words in the poem lets us know the author's attitude or tone? What tone am I trying to reveal in my poem? If you need help and are able, watch What is Tone on YouTube. Now it's time to draft your third and final poem. Remember, you can choose one of your own original ideas, but always remember you have access to the writing prompts for poetry to help you if you get stuck. Make sure that your poem includes figurative language, imagery, and tone. If you need help with your brainstorming, you can use the writing prompts for poetry in the resource packet. Also take a look at the cups and arms handout in the resource packet to improve two areas of your poem. You'll be using this resource on Friday. By the end of the day on Thursday, you should have reread one model poem, written a thoughtful reflection, and have a rough draft of your third poem in your literacy notebook, on a sheet of paper, or in a Word document. Again, remember to use imagery and figurative language of your own. On Friday, it's time to put the final touches on your poem, seventh grade. Look at the cups and arms list. Choose two areas where your poems need the most help. It's not necessary to revise and edit everything. As you revise and edit though, use a different colored ink for each so you can easily see your changes. Once you've finished your revisions and edits, write your final drafts of your poem on clean sheets of paper, or you can also type them up in a Word document or a Google Doc if that's easier. Now, did you write a brilliant poem and you want the world to read it? Get an adult's permission and submit your work online to literary journals like New Moon Girls or The Young Writers Project. By the end of the day on Friday, seventh graders should have one brainstorm, three half page reflections based on the poems that you read, three rough drafts that have proof of revising and editing in different colored inks, three final draft poems with little to no errors in grammar and mechanics, and you should submit your work of your final draft to your teacher via email, the hub, Microsoft Teams, or any other way that you are submitting work to your teacher. Just as a recap, seventh graders, you will write a collection that includes thoughtful reflections on poems that you have read, as well as three original poems that show evidence of revising and editing and final drafts that include few errors in grammar and mechanics. And last but not least, eighth grade. Eighth grade, you will also be completing creative writing in poetry. Your targets will include reading for longer amounts of time, reading and taking notes about poetry, writing poetry, and revising and editing poetry. You will also create a collection that includes thoughtful reflections on poems that you have read, as well as three original poems that show evidence of revising and editing, and final drafts that include few errors in grammar and mechanics. Your independent reading will also be each day for 15 minutes. Make sure that you record anything that surprises you, any interesting language you notice, or words that pop from the page. 
On Monday, you will read one poem from the poetry selections in the resource packet. Eighth graders have a longer list to choose from, so we added a separate document with links to a, a whole list of poems that you can select from. As you read, annotate the poems using the WASP strategy. Look at the words that popped off the page. Write a half page reflection that answers the question, how did the poet paint a picture with their words? Finally, brainstorm ideas for your poems. You can come up with original ideas, or if you get stuck, you can use the writing prompts for poetry located in the resources packet. If you need help finding a poem to read, please use the poetry selections in the resource packet. You have the option to choose from the following poems, Swarm, Diving for Treasure, Amphibians, The Border, a double sonnet, Church, a blank white page, and Eating Words. If you click on the poem, it will take you to the online location. If you cannot reach online locations, you're also allowed to use poems from your eighth grade textbook. If you need help with annotating your poem, you can use WASP, which is located in your resource packet. Remember, W stands for words that pop, A stands for attitude, S is for shifts, and P is for poetic devices. There are questions in each section that will help you know which words and which information to pull from your poems. If you need help with brainstorming, remember you can use an option from the writing prompts for poetry in the resources packet. You can come up with your own original ideas if you choose, but if you get stuck, this is a great resource to turn to. By the end of the day on Monday, you should have read one model poem and have a list of brainstorm ideas for your poems. On Tuesday, you will choose another poem from Monday's list. Again, think about the WASP strategy as you read. Next, you will write a half-page reflection that answers the questions, what imagery does the poet use? How can I use some of those craft moves in my own poems? Hint, remember that imagery is descriptive language that appeals to your senses. When you read the words on the page, you should be able to almost see, taste, touch, smell, or hear what the poet is describing. Now it's time to begin writing your own poems. Look at your brainstorm list from yesterday and choose three ideas and place a star next to them. You will write a rough draft of a poem in your literacy notebook on a sheet of paper or in a Word document. Remember to try to use some imagery of your own. One or two examples will be a great start. Again, if you need help finding a poem to read, make sure that you look for the poetry selections in the resource packet or use your textbook. If you need help annotating your poem, turn to the WASP strategy in your resources packet as well. By the end of the day on Tuesday, you should have read one model poem, written a thoughtful reflection, and have a rough draft of your first poem in your literacy notebook, on a sheet of paper, or in a Word document. Don't forget to use examples of imagery. On Wednesday, choose a third poem from Monday's list. As you read, look for figurative language. Remember, figurative language includes similes, metaphors, and personification. You will write a half-page reflection that answers the question, what figurative language did the author use and how did it make you as the reader feel? If you need more help and you are able, please watch the video, The Art of the Metaphor, on YouTube. Time to draft another poem. If you're stuck, try a prompt from the writing prompts for poetry. Remember, try to include figurative language and imagery in this poem. If you need help finding a poem to, write, to read, use the poetry selections in your resource packet. And if you need help with brainstorming or writing, make sure that you look at the writing prompts for poetry in the resource packet. By the end of the day on Wednesday, you should have read one model poem, written a thoughtful reflection over it, 
and you should have a rough draft of your second poem in your literacy notebook on a sheet of paper or in a Word document. Don't forget to include examples of imagery and figurative language in your second poem. On Thursday, you will reread a poem from Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. As you read, see if you can point out how the poet reveals his or her feelings or attitude. Write a half page reflection that answers the questions. What words in the poem lets us know how the author's attitude or tone is meant to make us feel. What tone am I trying to reveal in the poem? I wrote yesterday. If you need help and you are able, watch What is Tone on YouTube. Now it's time to draft your third poem. Remember, you can choose one of your original ideas, or always remember that if you get stuck, you can choose another prompt from the Writing Prompts for Poetry resource in the resource packet. Make sure that you include imagery, figurative language, and tone. If you need help, you can use an option from the Writing Prompts for Poetry and then also take a look at the Cups and Arms handout in the resources packet because you will use it to improve two areas of your writing on Friday. By the end of the day on Thursday, you should have reread one model poem, written a thoughtful reflection, and have a rough draft of your third poem in your literacy notebook on a sheet of paper or in a Word document. Make sure that you have included imagery, figurative language, and tone in your poems. On Friday, you're going to put it all together. You will put the final touches on your poems. Look at the cups and arms list that you looked at yesterday. Choose two areas where you think your poem needs the most help. Don't worry about trying to revise or edit everything at once. As you revise and edit, use different colored ink for each so you can easily see your changes. Once you have finished your revisions and edits, write final drafts of your poems on clean sheets of paper. You can also type them up in a Word document if that's easier. Now, have you written a fantastic poem and you want everybody to know about it? Get an adult's permission and submit them online to literary journals like New Moon Girls or the Young Writers Project. By the end of the day on Friday, you should have one brainstorm, three half-page reflections based on poems you read, three rough drafts that have proof of revising and editing in different colored inks, three final draft poems with little to no errors in grammar or mechanics, and you will submit your final drafts to your teacher via email on the Hub, Microsoft Teams, or any other way that you are submitting your work to your teacher. Just as a recap, eighth graders, you will have completed a, a collection that includes thoughtful reflections on poems that you have read, as well, of three of, as well as three of your own original poems that show evidence of revising and editing, and final drafts that include few errors in grammar or mechanics. I want to thank you for stopping by and looking at the work that we have in place for you this week. Remember that you can always get more help on the HISD at Home website. Thank you for tuning in.